You know, for me to train, I like to get up in the morning and run a marathon before breakfast. And then do some speed work, maybe a 10 or 12 mile run in the afternoon, but uh, at a faster tempo. The first time I heard about running 100 miles, I thought no human is capable of doing this. And when you do it yourself, I think it just breaks boundaries. And I've run 135 miles across Death Valley in the middle of summer, which is the hottest place on earth. It was 131 degrees. And I've run a marathon to the South Pole, which is the coldest place on earth. It was minus 45 degrees. Once I ran 50 marathons in all 50 US states in 50 days. I've run on all seven continents twice, so I've seen a lot of the world through running. I kind of followed the prescription for happiness that we have here in, in America. You go to a good college, you get a good degree, you get a nice job, you make a lot of money, <laughs> you buy a lot of shit, and, and happiness follows. We had money in the bank, and we had a 401k, and insurance, and he was miserable. Absolutely miserable. Uh, I didn't feel like there's any intensity in my life. I mean, everything kind of came easy. I was so comfortable that I just wanted to destroy myself. I was in San Francisco on my 30th birthday with my buddies. About 11 o'clock at night, I said, I'm leaving. So I walked out and ran 30 miles that night, straight through the night, and became a runner the next day. I've been sliced and diced and analyzed by a lot of the scientific community. There's a program called Stan Lee's Superhumans, and they found that I have a unique ability to buffer something called lactic acid, byproduct of cellular respiration. Say you take a heavy weight and you start doing curls, you can do maybe four or five reps, and then you start feeling that burning sensation in your arm, and you gotta put the weight down. Well, that's the buildup of lactic acid. That just doesn't happen to me. When you're running those kind of distances, you have an enormous number of, of challenges. Gastrointestinal, joint pain, muscular pain, blisters, chafing. Lost toenails. Fatigue, hypothermia, heat exhaustion if it's a really hot day. Once ran a race called the Badwater Ultra Marathon, which is considered the toughest foot race on earth. The low temperature that night was 114 degrees and I threw my electrolytes out of balance, and I was hallucinating. And my crew said they found me passed out on the roadside. And I'd been asleep for six hours. There's points where you feel so much hurt and so much discomfort that even the tip of your nose just radiates pain and all you want to do is stop. I love watching my body deteriorate to the point where I'm getting beat to shit and can I keep going? Can I make it to the finish line? You know, there are tricks I've learned. One of the tricks is you don't get ahead of yourself, so you just be in the moment. It's very rare we live in the now. I mean, usually we're thinking about the future or we're you know, checking our Twitter feed or you know, we're getting texts or we're reflecting on the past. Uh, but when you're in these conquests like that, you don't think about anything except being the best that you can be in that instant of time. So I just say to myself, take your next footstep to the best of your ability. Okay, take your next footstep. And it's a struggle. Sometimes just to put one foot in front of the other is a struggle. What's remarkable is he has a running career that has not included any sort of significant injury. You know, some people say you only have so many foot strikes in your life that you're gonna wear out your knees, you know, you can only take so many steps and then it's, you know, your back's gonna go, something's gonna go. Bullsh People ask the hypothetical, what would happen to you if you can't run? I always tell people my finish line is a pine box.